All right, what and all, welcome back to the Competitive Age of Empires for Action. It's time for my favorite, Eminem. No raps, I promise. Instead, it's going to be what feels like an everlasting grudge match. Magic versus Marine Lord. That's right, Marine Lord, the reigning champion in the realm of Age of Empires 4 until we get our next land. Up against the one person that beat him on that land. So, technically, that does... That, that could mean... That does mean, actually, like, Magic is better than the number one player in Age of Empires 4, right? This is always the brag that comes up. This is always the uh, the weird little grudge that I <laughs> stoke between them. And it's always great to see the, the smack talk that comes out beforehand. I still remember recently when like people were asking about scheduling, and Marilo's response was, um, you can tune in at X to watch me versus blah, blah, and you can tune in at Y to watch me smack the crap out of Magic. Like The confidence he's played with has been well earned. Outside of the Red Bull Wallow performance of Magic, I think most of the time, it's always been a Marine Lord win. Most of the time, on top of that, it's been 2-0. So, pretty uphill battle for Magic. And one that I think mattered a lot less to him at this stage, right? Like, the Magic Marine Lord series was uh, in the final round. At that point, Magic was mid-pack, but Vortex had already secured an extra win. So, this was the difference between basically getting, I think, fourth or fifth. That's fifth or sixth, rather. So... It would have been a, a prize money bump. Pretty impressive to see Magic actually still able to be that close to making playoffs, right? Especially not too far away, especially for a guy who isn't full-time. We have to remember that Magic, compared to a lot of these other players, has less time to grind, courtesy of him having a full-time job. So I was just talking about this draft, and this is interesting. This is the first time we've seen Japan on Coastal Cliffs, and I think that they are decent on Coastal Cliffs. The reason you haven't seen them so far is there's just better maps for them. And on the other side, I think Marlins is overrated here. To me, whenever I see Marlins thrown out on this map, it's either A, because someone's paranoid about English coming out because their opponent got it in the draft, or B, they don't have a specific matchup in mind later in the draft where it's favorable. I think Marlins and the way they drafted around Coastal Cliffs is going to change when we move into the playoffs into best of seven territory. That's where Marlins are going to be reserved to different maps because although this might look like a beneficial spawn, this, is, this feels like uh, you rolling dice and just getting nat 20s all day long, right? Like, I very rarely see a spawn like this, let alone behind your TC. But even with this placement, there is a negative. Look how wide the tree lines are. This is a very open and shut case of dive in here. Um, also, it means now you have less space to set up your Fulani behind. We might even see a situation where Magic has to set up a Fulani, what, like, maybe... Yeah, it's going to have to be here. I actually think the Mansa going here is pretty rough because now he doesn't have room for Fulani in the more defendable location. That's unfortunate. It's because Magic didn't want to have to move around. He didn't want to idle people out of a well, wheelbarrow, but I think this hurts him a bit. Now, let's talk about why the Japanese aren't as desirable on this map in particular. Um, one of the big negatives of playing Japan on this map is that although you've got all these tight relics and although you've got decent food nearby, you don't have stone flex if you need it. It's too far away. And the big issue, the biggest issue is like the most popular play for Japan is to open with mounted samurai and flood the map. Cav sieves don't work that well on coastal cliffs. Like we're still seeing some picks that are decent like Jean d'Arc, but that's not really because of the cavalry. That's because of other elements for the sieve. The cavalry compartment is a bit weaker because you don't actually have the breadth of map that you would on, say, a dry Arabia. Remember, the coastal cliffs, although there's fishing down here, it's not accessible. This entire area is cut off. This is just a design choice by Avali to split the map, to make it a two-thirds size map. Um, we've seen this type of strategy before, right? Like, you can even do, like, naked water, you can do cliff sides. These type of things will actually create a smaller map. We even actually have a few custom maps we had created um, that for our custom games, for our community games, that basically just surround the map with cliffs to make it smaller. So that's what the intent was with this design. So tech up is complete. And I can't help but feel this has to be some aggro play, right? Because I've seen this build before, and I genuinely think Marlins get pretty hard counted by Japanese if you play Feudal Age. So the way you open this typically is like you'll see a player go into uh, the Horseman, and then that'll get a reaction into Donzo. And then you switch into the Onobagisha. And the timing is very aggressive from the Japanese, especially if they get into this. They've got Taka Zaiku already on the way. That food gathering rate enables that type of spam. It's incredibly powerful. I actually think, and you know, hold, hold your breath on this, don't, don't judge me too quickly. Yumi might be low-key amazing up against the Japanese, uh, up against Marlins. Because the reason is that with Yumi, Marlin Javelins will overkill a lot. And I mean a lot. And on top of that, the Yumi move quicker than standard archers, so they can gap close. 
to just get on top of the Donzos and clear them out, right? So, like, you know, I think this matchup, Japan just has a lot of good options to lean into. But it looks like in this game, Marine Lord isn't going to try to contest it at all. Instead, he's going to let Magic actually just start setting up his ranches. So we actually just have a Castle Age race. That's interesting. Hmm. I think it makes sense to a certain degree, right? Like, it is a retractor pit mine. If this was Ford or more loose, you could actually go for, like, the Horseman or the Onibagisha. And Magic really doesn't want us to watch this. Magic, dude, what? why wouldn't you want us to watch this? It's, dude, it's fine. This is, this is absolutely fine, Magic. Like, you know what it is? This is just you warming up in prep for Wallow, right? Because we were just saying, Magic, that you are, you are the reigning champion, technically. Marine Lord is the world champion of Age of Empires 4, and you're the only player that beat him at that tournament, which technically makes you above the number one spot. So all this is, is like, you know, if it's this bad, Magic, what, what we're getting here, we're probably just going to get you um, bolstering Marine Lord's ego so that he can once again sit down at a dinner before a major tournament and smack talk you, right? This is, this is big brain. You're Giga Chad. I love it. So, guys, what you just saw there from Magic, he just said he uh, this is his second game back from vacation. So that was actually an intentional flex. So now we expect Marine Lord to win. So when Magic wins, it's really embarrassing for Marine Lord. We figured it out. <laughs> Frax in the weirdest place I think I've ever seen someone build it for the Japanese. <laughs> and we are getting the Onibagisha starting to come out already. Hmm. Now, Magic... Yeah, he is going ultra greed. <laughs> I knew it as well, dude. Like, this is the thing. This is one of the few saves I'd actually back to slap the Malians for doing this, like, triple mill ranch spam. It's actually atrocious just how quickly, like, the Japanese can flood you on a map like this. And I'm not talking about going into Mount Samurai. Mount Samurai would get countered by Donzos, right? Ona Bagisha, like, how are you solving for that? He's already trying to spam out arches. <laughs> Because he sees one Onibagisha. Please tell me you're not going to build like 20 archers and he's going to build Samurai. Please, please. I've got a really bad feeling now, guys. <laughs> oh, I am, I'm hoping he doesn't fall for this. Because like, this is one of the really, really, really annoying things actually about the Japanese. When you're on the receiving end of this Castle Age rush. The Rax just has so much utility to it. If you think about it, this one building can build units that counter everything in the game. Right? Spearman for Cav, um, Onobagisha for Light Cav or ranged units, Samurai to deal with like melee mosh pit frontliners. They can even counter all types of infantry in Castle Age with Odachi tech. This one building, the reason why you probably see Rax is built in 75% of the, Sam uh, the Japanese games first is because of that flexibility. It's insane how powerful it is. The only reason why you're seeing Mount Samurai at the moment is because the cast stage rush means there's not many units on the field. So independently, those Mount Samurai are worth more, especially with the surge point. But as you get deeper in the game, it always becomes about the racks. And instead, it's a bait and switch. <laughs> oh, no. Magic. He just scoured it as well. Well, my friend, it, it was good knowing you. Uh, this is going to be brutal. He fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. He built archery range. He only just got a Rax now. He done triple mill. And he's filling out the ranches. But, dude, if you try and go Castle Age here, you, I think you just die upon arrival, right? Magic. Definitely has a problem. Mount Samurai are on the move. Relics are already on the way home now from Marine Lord. Whoa, okay, he, did he miss macro a lot? I feel like he missed macro here. With this many people on gold, I feel like, yeah, he prioritized the undermesh instead of getting the extra amount of samurai. It makes sense, right, when you're diving a TC. And oh my god, dude, magic. No, 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 not like, no, not like this. He's gone for the, oh, no, he's gone for the Misafani. Okay, so you could have gone Donzo here. <laughs> I'm gonna be totally real with you, bud. Do Donzo probably would have done what you needed. Musafari, on the other hand, is kind of wild. I, I think Magic, if we had to get into his thought process here, he's paranoid about his opponent going in for Samurai because he knows about the racks, right? So he thinks that Musafari works because there's a mid-ground between dealing with the Mounted Samurai and dealing with the Foot Samurai. The problem is that this just makes Mounted Samurai such an easy-peasy hook, line, and sinker here, right? Like the charge in, you now have no denial. That means you initially get hit for 36 damage on a 90 health unit. It's so one-sided and, oh, thank God. I thought he was going to actually be able to throw him there. So, Fulani's on the way. 
the tough part now is like Magic basically has to rely on flooding. He's playing Zerg versus Zerg. I, I think this is a weird matchup for Marlins for that specific reason. Although this is quality right now, Marin Lord can switch into Zerg Factor. And I just think Japanese is a better Zergling Sith. Right? With the Unabagisha spam, um, they can just destroy what the Marlins do. And if you plan to go into Sofas, you just continue this Mount Samurai. The Mount Samurai destroys Sofas. So <laughs> this game is already over, I think. Oh no! No, no, no! We got found! Villagers being struck down now. He's going to split up. I love this Marine Lord. He just going to stick in one location. He goes everywhere, so you can't just out-micro him and use the TC to garrison and hide. Magic. He has got the Fulani online, sure, but with the amount of eco losses he's about to realize here, I don't think Fulani matters anymore. It's more a Fulani in this game. Yep, a Blacksmith will definitely help us. Maybe you could reach in and just slap them around the face with an anvil. It's probably the only way you're going to be able to kill him here. I think this is the point where Magic wants us to click off the game. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Don't guys, this is fine though. Magic, absolute chad. Two thirds of his economy is idle, but is it really, guys? Think about this. He's got the Fulani, he's got the double pit mine. He has all this food and gold. He's going to be absolutely fine in game number two um, because game number one is basically dead. This has that vibe of like first time experiencing a castle as Japanese rush. <laughs> I don't mean to say that to do magic dirty. It's just the cleanliness with which it was executed. Gets baited. That one choice to actually go in with the archer opening screwed him. Hook, line, and sinker there. Well played actually by Marina to find that. And you know, this is the awkward thing about this matchup. Like, we, I think there's two ways you can play this. You can play long feudal depending on where the pit mines are. Or you can go fast castle, and you see how powerful it is. By having racks and having stables, you basically have your opponent covered. There's nothing they can do unless they rush their castle age. I do think if there's one way that you can maybe win this matchup as Marlins, the cleaner way is probably going to be to go for Frimba. It sounds weird. It doesn't feel great. But I think that the, the cow setup just takes a little bit too long against the very aggressive timing that the Japanese have. If you think about other sieves, the reason why this is different and why it works is other sieves can't actually just flood heavy cav that quickly, right? They can't get them out three times faster with a stables drop. That's what makes the Japanese such an egregious sieve to face off against, and that's what's making the cast stage build so quick. It's not just the gathering speeds that get them there. It's the fact that when they arrive, they have these premium hard-hitting units out in the first 12 seconds. There's not really many sieves that can brag that. The sieves that can, like the French, like the Rus, that's because they build them in feudal. And there's still a delay, like leveling up, teching up, right? Where it takes longer to actually get that tech upgrade than it does to pump out those initial knights. So kind of a crazy difference there. Does mean we open up early with a win for Marine Lord. The question now is whether he's going to make it two on the board. If our boy Magic can strike back. Now, in Magic's, in Magic's own words here, he said that this was his second game back after vacation, which means this is his third game back. That means that since we last watched Magic versus Marine Lord, he has played 50% more games. That's scary. All right, Magic, he's warmed up. He's whipping out his Chinese. This is a, a comfort pick, 100% our Magic here. Uh, he loves his Chinese. I honestly, I'd say like, it's kind of weird to say this, but... I. I I would say he's more interested in playing the Chinese than, say, someone like like Crackity. It's kind of wild, actually. And competitive, it's always in his draft from what I've been seeing, unless someone bans it away from him. Um, Chinese versus Ibids is kind of a tough one, though, no? I feel like the, the Ibid timing needs to be contested. I'm not sure if Song Dynasty is good enough to just get you out of that awkward situation. If I have a look at the stats here, let's see if we can get some hope for Magic going. Chinese versus Ibids. Okay, boom, there we go. It's a win. 57.4% win rate. This is good for Magic. And it's a decent map for it as well, actually. Um, I think Lipany is better than, say, a Dry Arabia for 2TC play. And I'm expecting a second TC here. Um, you could try to rush Castle, but realistically, there's no value rushing Castle in this matchup. You know, what are you going to do? Build Camel Lancers? Uh, Lancers against Camel Lancers? Uh, you're going to die. Are you going to build it into the pass card? Camel Lancers will still kill you. You know, there's not really great options. There are many great options there compared to just going like for a Barbican plus the Imperial Academy. And then I think it's a choice between the second TC or you choose Castle Age and acknowledge that you're going to have more eco as the game goes on. Whoa, 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 boy, whoa, boy. Well, we need confirmation there. Magic said, let me just get the exact words of Magic. 
Second game back from vacay. So if the one we just watched was the second game back, that means that this is the third game. So that's a 50% increase since he last faced off against Marine Lord. There you go. Are you guys questioning my math? Do you really? Do you guys realize that we're talking under 10 and I do have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 fingers? Well, actually, 8 fingers. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, boy, but that's the thing. So he didn't go from one game to two games played. If that was his second game back after vacation, that was his second game. So now he's into his third game. Wait. I'm deep diving there. Who cares? There's a Chinese eye bid opening. This guy's going to go fast castle and this guy's going to eco boom like a greedy ducker. We can spend time on this. You're agreeing that it's 100% now? No, I'm saying like you got... Maths is hard. Do you guys know? Okay, okay. You know, maths is very hard, right? Check this. 124, 102, 262, 237. Right? No wonder I struggle with maths. What is this? Huh? Can we just agree this is not my fault? This is what Age of Empires 4 has done to me. Did you guys know that I actually was a, a premium mathematician before I got into AOE 4? Like, yeah, people actually trusted me to, like, count up at the checkout without actually using a computer, right? And that was wearing gloves. That was wearing, like, mittens, so I couldn't use my fingers either. I was that good. But then I got into AOE 4, where apparently you can have 310 out of 250, which makes no sense. A game where... Song Dynasty would, what, what was it? It would increase you by, I'm trying to remember the exact number they gave, 35%, and that led to a number that made no sense. Same as, like, for example, if you get the Golden Age increase, tier two, it gives you a research speed increase of 50%, which decreases a minute timer to 40 seconds. And we're questioning my math right now. There we go, guys. Dude, I'd be a great politician. I just flipped the script. Turn the lens elsewhere. All right, so, Marine Lord versus Magic. <laughs> Let's get back to the game, because I'm wondering if this is... Yeah, it is going to be the Barbican. Ooh, what does this Barbican do? I guess it protects the stone? There's not really... It's not a great spawn for, like, a secure Barbican. It's weird, because you could just wall this off and you have safety. So, like, I don't mind the spawn still for, for the Chinese here. I think Magic just wants to go 2TC. The Barbican's going to protect him, right? Otherwise, the Desert Raid is coming around. You could just wall here, short wall. The weird part to me about this Barbican is because you've placed it kind of like a midpoint between the deer stack and the stone, you actually don't have full protection on either, which is why he still has to place a wall here, despite the fact that typically this Barbican would secure the stone. Desert Raider? Wait, is that Desert Raider about to insta-die? Oh, no, 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 no. No, come on. Magic. <laughs> okay. I'll admit my math was a little bit off, but can we just can we just accept that my, my instincts from what I just said, like the whole Barbican placement was 100% right? <laughs> so he's just stuck here now waiting for stable units he's probably gonna need two horsemen i think the desert raider should have enough health to actually beat one horseman if he goes full melee mode straight away so magic's gonna have to wait right yep there we go oh dude this is so brutal look at marino's resources oh no so magic wanted to go multi tc i think that's pretty obvious right i mean uh, we got magic here he can be honest about it. yeah he's gonna be honest now in the game it's pretty obvious he wants to with this wall desert raider's just gonna be a nuisance and this one horseman could easily lose before the second one gets here. So it does pull back in time. This is still ugly though, guys. Like Magic had to go into stables, had to add in horsemen. He's still going to end up losing one of those horsemen here. No doubt. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the Red Bull Wallalol champ that I'm, I'm looking for right there. Baited him into a range switch and actually kept the horseman alive. Um, but here's the real Red Bull Wallalol champ. This guy is already on his way with Growth Wing. And it is a Marine Lord Iabid build. You know what that means, folks? 
That means all the berries last. Raise your hands if you want those players that, that ate through the berries. Raise your hands if you want those people that like mama walks in the room and says, who ate my berry pie? And you've just got like red smooshed across your face. Not Marine Lord. Marine Lord, he always just dabs it with a napkin. He leaves seconds until later. It means he's going to get an extra 600 food here. Safely in his base. And it means Magic's going to actually find it quite difficult to get any sort of dent damage done here. There's a radar on the way across. Second one. Marine Lord, dude, okay, this is interesting. He's actually actively producing additional Desert Raiders. That's surprising, especially against this Civ, but I really like it. It's kind of Giga Brain. The reason is that you can achieve this kind of idle, but more importantly, think about the priority targets, right? Like, you know, if these villagers had textiles, sure, it'd be like, oh, you know, don't we get 50 resources. Instead, it's the taxmen you can target, which is over double the resource count for the equivalent health of textiles. So it's such an easy prime target if you ever see these officials overextending. In the meantime, though, it's just going to be a nuisance for magic because it's chip damage that is going to allow the Lance to follow up to kill. <laughs> Dude, this is actually so clean from Marine Lord. Mm. I think... Magic's got a serious problem right now. The walls are going up. Like, this spawn did actually help him a lot. This high ground deer is so safe. It's like a bank. He's got berries in the back corner afterwards. Like, there is enough food in this corner to camp. The issue is going to be what you're giving over to the Ibids in the meantime. Every relic is going to be accessible. It's very hard for you to, to just delude yourself into believing that's not going to be the case. Growthwing just came in, which means Marine Lord has just offset the value you had from Song2TC straight away. That's the power of this Ibid play. And now with additional stables coming in, this is where the pump begins. Other side of this magic. Gonna need that blacksmith face up. Gonna need the extra little bit of steel arrow damage maybe to try and chip down what he sees quicker. It's interesting actually he's prioritizing blacksmith here, considering that actually if it's camel lancers, you have no value, right? Camel lancers start with four armor. So steel arrow increasing you from four damage to five doesn't actually increase your damage at all. I think it's more for the TC fire, so that he has a little bit extra firepower coming out there with double TC. But it's still, it, it feels a little bit... Eh. I'm, I'm hoping this is just more him prepping for, say, crossbow transition. Still, Dari is on the way. Magic just checked the clock and realized his Chugan Noom Rush may be a few minutes late. Green Lord on the other side. What have we got resource-wise? Oh, dude, are you kidding me? Oh, that's insane. That's actually crazy. He got three berry stacks basically on one screen. And that's really important because it means that he doesn't have to guard two flanks at once as he gathers and, and grows his eco. He can just move out with one swoop in one di uh, direction. Magic. Now start to stop all a bit of food, but still nowhere near that cast stage timing. He can't even fight this. I mean, <laughs> I'm a little bit shocked we didn't see Spearman sooner than this. Oh man, he's going to lose additional eco. Three Desert Raiders? This actually stings. He hasn't upgraded them. That's the interesting part. Is Marine Lord has three Desert Raiders, but no upgrades at all. They would be killing so fast with these as archer attacks at this point. <laughs> this is tough. Scout goes down, but here's the thing. When you're up against the Ibids, them losing the Scout isn't really a negative. If Marine Lord like, loses that Scout, it's like, okay, that was my tank. Realistically, the Scout going down doesn't hurt you because these Raiders and the Lancers have great vision anyway. They see so much more than their opponents. Well, Lancers specifically. Desert Rays, I believe, still get like one tile extra, but if I'm not mistaken, Lancers might be two. The reason for that is Lancers, they need a long vision to be able to charge. Otherwise, they're an underwhelming unit. But yeah, damage done. Magic's been kept in his base. He's been kept in Feudal Age. And now we can see the Relics are on their way home. Marine Lord is going to be going in for the Desert Raider upgrade. I love this. I think actually this is significant range damage. It's kind of interesting that more people haven't done this, right? It's like it's a mobile archer is the way you have to think about this. Now, one negative of when you do this kind of build is typically when you initially went up, the Golden Age 2 wasn't there. What I love from Marine Lord is he waited to get the Desert Raider tech until he had the level 2 Golden Age. So it meant that he got that upgrade much quicker, which means less idle time. Ego, more time spent building Lancers. Okay, this is a spooky game. I don't think Magic can go for an age up before he's like, like 120 pop. 
Let's combine military eco. Eco needs to be about 80, 85. And then he needs enough spearmen to keep this at bay. The problem is, like, now that you're getting spared to go into uh, baited to go in spears and archers, you can already see Marinlo is prepping the archers. And the problem with this is these archers are going to eventually have Mamluk's bravery, right? Like, we've got a blacksmith at the back. Hasn't actually pumped it yet, but Sultan's Mamluks will probably prioritize after the undermesh level 2. Meantime, you can just fight with lances. Charges in. Chiginu are not attacking the right target right now. Magic, dude. Okay, Magic, let's explain this. The ones with the sh Okay, no, I'm confused too. Which one do we kill? Kill the ones without the shield. Oh, no. Oh, if the Chuganu had just attacked the Desert Raiders, this would have looked a lot better on the tail end. I mean, it still would have been rough, but at least you wouldn't have been getting chased down like this. Yeah, this is another reason why I really like the upgrade on the Desert Raiders, is look how much harder it is to tell these two apart. These ones are Camel Lancers, that's why. But if we look across and find a Desert Raider, I think he's still got one out in the field. You'll see what I'm talking about. If I can find him. Where is his Desert Raider? He's got a Desert Raider somewhere. Am I just blind? I think I'm just blind. Now, don't get me wrong. All these people, they're their own unique people. But let's be totally real. They do dress the exact same. The only difference between Camel Lancers and Desert Raiders is that the Desert Raiders uh, don't have the shield, right? Like this little detail here. This very microscopic detail that you can see when I'm zooming in. You can't see when I'm like this, can you? Right? Like, it's obvious when they're lance charging, sure. But when they're actually attacking in melee, that's when it's difficult to keep track of what you're meant to hit. Because when you upgrade the Desert Raiders to the Cuff Stage variant, they get the same kind of dressing on their camel. They go silver and they go bronze. Where the bloody hell is that Desert Raider? I'm so confused right now. I, I feel like I'm just being an idiot somehow, but I don't think I am. I think legit this Desert Raider has just gone AWOL somewhere. I just can't see. He's definitely not here. <laughs> I don't know if this is an AOE forecast anymore or where's Waldo at this stage. I, this, I have legit lost the de The Desert Raiders are so hard to tell apart from the Camel Lancers. I can't even find him and I've been... There we go. So you've got the silver and then you've got like this silver, right? If you look very closely from the back end, sure. But like from the front end, they are pretty hard to like discriminate between. There is a little bit more silver on the Desert Raider, sure. But like when you're in a mosh pit, it's so difficult to tell. Josh coming in. Oh man, this is going to be brutal. Magic trying to hold on. Keep in mind behind this, we just saw Marine Lord pump the free TC build. He loves doing this. This is like his go-to build is the Ibids. If he doesn't feel like he can close the game in five minutes. It means he's not going to fall behind on economy. It means Magic's timings are completely skewed here. He's also going into Palace Guard, which is just rough here. You're still up against Camel Lance spam. And Archers in this quantity with the range 2 upgrade advantage will destroy you. Magic. I love how the villagers just don't get pulled back. He's like, I definitely just need to keep gathering here. The outpost is at least going to reset this. The Marine Lord is going to back away. But guys, we're talking about a 5 relic free sacred site game. This is pretty bad right now for Magic. That, okay, now we're getting too deep in the immersion. I like this. Do you think it makes sense that camels debuff enemy camels but not friendly camels? Do camels have a sense of nationality? Well, no, no. See, this is the problem. It's, it, how does that even work? Do the camels have a directional aura of fear that they exude? Is it a death stare, maybe? Do the Camel Lancers look at their targets and then their targets just go full on Nani mode before exploding? Because here's the problem. You can't argue that the Horsemen and the Ayurveds have been tempered to not fear the Camels. Because if that's the case, why is it in an Ayurved mirror that they're scared of the other Camels? I can only think that they, they basically know all the Camels by name. They basically sleep in the same location. So, you know... The, the horseman is like, oh, yeah, that's Tony, the, the camel, and that's that's uh, Gerald, the camel. Yeah, they're, dude, they're, they're, good, they're good people. They're not going to cause me any harm. But then when they see, like, you know, Richard, the camel, from the purple Ibid player, like, oh, crap, we got problems. So clearly, the, the answer is that horses and camels are able to uniquely identify each other, kind of like we would, right? Like, you know, I don't know... I don't, I, it made me feel bad if I, if I need to feel bad. I don't know if I'm the only one who does this. There's some people that I just ID from the back end by looking at their hairline. You know, how much they're boarding by. That's how I know who I'm talking to. I think camels do the same thing. 
Clash coming in. Spirinol's trading out. Nestabees will at least push Marino back. He's not going to break the base with this push, but he's denying food right now. And behind this, he's got Sacred Sight still ticking. He's got walls going up, and he is closing that eco league quick. My real question, though, is like, how does the Sultan's Mamluk work? How did these guys know who gets the buff? Do they have like a Call of Duty kill feed? You know, you know when you're like, oh yeah, um, big dongle XX69 killed your mama bagel 52, right? Like, and then like, yeah, I get the buff. 25% damage increase, 20% movement speed. How do they know, man? Like when there's 50 archers all shooting one target. How do they know who should be inspired? See, now you've opened a can. All right, I can't believe you've done this to me. We're going to go on my, one of my Immersion is Ruined rants. Maybe they, like, mark the bolts. That still doesn't make sense for being hit by 50 archers. I'm sorry. The, the, by the way, this supports my idea that the way Mamluk's Bravery should work is if the unit that's already buffed kills another unit, it buffs someone nearby to them, right? It's an infectious buff. I'm sorry that I'm suggesting ways for Ibis to get buffed. I know a lot of people hate that, but... Let's focus on the state of the game, because we do need to recap. Magic has, of course, caught up an age. He actually has the full farm transition going, so if Magic can survive the next fight, he starts to look pretty good here. It's still a five relic situation. It's still a Sacred Sight timer, so he's going to have to fight probably sooner than he'd like here. And if we're being totally real, this isn't exactly scary army. Uh... Maybe if you could, like, load the Palace Guard into the Nestabees and shoot them at the enemy, that would be more fearful. But right now, he doesn't really have the mass to protect these. And if you guys are wondering why do Nestabees not affect the, uh, the Chinese army, that's very simple. Um, from a young age, Chinese children have, like, little like firecrackers thrown at them to train them. To, to, to mold their bodies so they aren't actually impervious to rocket fire. It's a very strong strategy um, that one, one day will lead to Chinese people ruling the world. Our missiles will just have no effect. Outpost. Dude, this outpost is so hard to kill right now. And he's running out of time. I think Magic needs to split the map and just try to find a quick decap. The problem is these walls are stopping him. And there's also Archers prepping to hit his eco. So Magic basically has one location he can try to decap. But this is going to be incredibly difficult. Oh my dear god, the Horseman! Oh, this truly is the apocalypse coming for Magic. Outpost trying to assist him, but the Nest of Ease are not going to be able to hold on long here. Archers tanky enough to live on through it. And this front line is breaking. Crossbows are now going to be exposed to the Horseman. Siege is going to get cleared up, and I think Magic is not long for this world anymore. Great micro as well. Marine Lord, he splits the archers wide, so he's not fully exposed here. It means these Nest of Bees actually don't get much value at all. It turns out that Marine Lord, all of his children have been training with Firecrackers too. And here we go. Oh, yeah, I killed this one. No, no, I, I killed this one too. This guy's greedy. He's killing all of them, apparently. So all these villagers going down as well. Magic now behind by over 10 economy. Army has been reduced to practically nothing. He doesn't have any siege sitting behind this. This was a sick timing by Marine Lord. And it is disgusting that he made it look so clean for a guy who's on limited resources. Guys, this isn't farms. He can't do horsemen nonstop. This was a, if this fails, I'm in trouble. But being him, being mass horseman, it's just a check, mate. And we didn't even check in. Did he go up with the, yeah. He went up with the, um, the advancement wing. <laughs> That's sick. Oh, I love this build so much. I mean, the game looked like it was almost over already, but to get Advancement Wing, saving so much resources just for the Horseman upgrade, the Archer upgrade, shows you the difference it makes, right? Free Nest of Bees was not able to break this due to the health difference. And now the, the kind of crazy part is with this build that Marine Lord just shoot us, you literally can deal with Palace Guard because the Palace Guard don't actually have enough ranged armor. They naturally have less armor overall. And the elite archers just hit so hard. And this is before we even seen Incendiary Arrows coming in. Dude, this is an insane build. I think Marine Lord is just showing us how absurd Iobids can be. Whether it's greedy or aggro matchup. Magic. 
I guess he's going to stay to the bitter end, right? You might as well in this situation. This was the final series of the entire group stage. Uh, Magic doesn't have anywhere else to be. He just got back from vacation. After this series, he's probably going to want to go back on holiday. Uh, <laughs> this is a brutal one. Magic. What's his play here? He's going to go for a stone uh, keep drop. I think he's going to look to pull probably 20 villagers and just drop a keep. That's his one hope here. We're two and a half minutes away. In Cinearis, it's going to be there by the time this, this fight starts, though. Remember, that research speed increase affects university techs. It's actually pretty absurd for Ibids at this stage in the game. Check this. Takes them a minute instead of a minute and a half to get these unlocks. Dude. I kind of feel bad for missing the Imperial Age detail. Admissibly, it's very easy to overlook with the current UI system. I think this game was kind of like an autopilot in a lot of ways, but this is just showing you how powerful this time it can be for the Ibids, that he was able to do that while still being in control of the game. Key drops now coming in on both sides. And when you're China and your castle's going up so uh, slower, I think it says everything it needs to. So many villagers are dying here. The spearmen are not able to actually take out the horsemen quick enough, and this is before biology. Dude, this is over. <laughs> I can't believe this magic. Even with the second villager pull, it's not going to be good enough here. Keeps already up from Marine Lord. There's not going to be a decap. We're now a minute and 20 seconds away, and Marine Lord will keep that dominant streak going over magic. President M versus M Lord. Uh, it turns out M Lord's just a little bit too strong. Flannels are going to have to come again another time. Magic, don't worry though, buddy. We already said you, this is just all the warm up. This is the preparation. We are like, you know, we've got Walla Log probably happening this year. This is all you just getting all the strategies out of Marine Lord now. So you just pulling them out of his brain, forcing him to show you just how broken Ivans is so that you can come into a tournament and show him how broken Ottomans are. Boom. It's all part of the strat, folks. Wait, are you kidding me? Please bring someone else. Please. Please. Just, just tap the hammer. Magic? Anyone? Okay, here they come. <laughs> oh no. no just, just tap it. Just tap it. Oh my god. Okay, castle goes up. At least he has that going for him. It just doesn't matter though. We're 10 seconds out. Marine Lord, an absolute stomp in here. Takes a 2 against Magic. But Marine Lord, harsh, unfair, my friend. Did you not realize Magic just got back from holiday? This is how you welcome him back? Outrage.